What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from Zoom again, and this time we are here with Gene Hoagland. Thank you so much for coming on to the show today, man. It is great to have you here. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Heavy New York. Glad to be here. Absolutely. Oh, the pleasure is all mine, and it's so glad to have you here. First thing is always first. I had the privilege of seeing you. I had the privilege of seeing you perform with two legends this year alone. Most recently with Dark Angel, a great, uh, you know, thrash, you know, just time warp in a way something i didn't really get to experience in my lifetime and a fantastic celebration to jim durkin and i also got to see you pay amazing tribute to chuck schuldner performing individual thought patterns with death to all revisiting some of this earlier material do you almost does it resonate with you differently now than when you did back in 1993 or in the 80s with dark angel in a way or does it still feel very much the same well to 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 start with with dark angel i gotta tell you like i've I've crabbed about it a whole lot over the last few years. Is God, I, I sure hate that drummer <laughs> from from Darkness Descends, man. Like, I was an eighteen-year-old, you know, wee one. Not that I was wee, but uh, you know, just what I've learned since then. You know, I, I I was just throwing everything out at the time, you know, and I I didn't. There were a lot of parameters about the drums that I, you know, I was 17, 18 years old. Now I'm quite a bit more experienced and I've been able to put that experience towards the the parts I write now, the, the tempo as I play now and that kind of thing. So, uh, but the one thing I do enjoy about the old school Dark Age returning to that kind of just vibe and feel is just the, the energy and just the, you know, just how it makes people just want to go crazy. It makes you want to go crazy on the drums and, and play as fast as you can. And I tell you, my, my thrash metal chops are definitely on fire these days from from playing all this dark angel stuff so so that is pretty darn cool man and um so yeah that's it's it's really fun just revisiting the old energy and just capturing the old capturing the vibe that you had back in the day like for instance we played los angeles you know about a month ago or so and man that was just completely maniacal it was right out of out of you know 1986 dark angel shows you know 85 86 where people were starting to really get crazy and thrash metal was starting to you know it was in its nascent areas there but it was starting to really coalesce the just the energy and the vibe and the people on stage and the the fact there were no rules like there are these days people bodies flying through the air all over the place at that la show that was that was magic, absolutely. Yeah, it was it was really a magical experience. Again, you know, as somebody who was born in 1993, like myself, so, you know, the last Dark Angel album came out before I was born in a way. To be right. able to experience this was truly, um, you know, a magical experience. I got to ask this, and I know a lot of people want to know. We'll get this question out of the way for you. But, like, uh, you know, with all of you playing together and revisiting this material, again, there was so much magic when you played at Irving Plaza. I, I just saw such a great camaraderie on stage and again a fantastic celebration it felt like jim durkin was in the room with us that night could we maybe see oh, we love it. could maybe we can we see you and dark angel maybe making some new music together and maybe you know making this sort of so maybe people like myself could experience the anticipation of a new dark angel coming out right well you know i tell you very soon we hope to be able to to have a lot of exciting news available for for you know all Dark Angel fans or anybody who's interested in our in our music or thrash metal in, in, in particular, hopefully in the very near future we're going to be able to um, move things along and be able to announce some really exciting news for Dark Angel and you know for for our fans and anybody like I say who might be interested. So you know hopefully hopefully that news is going to make people go yeah yes you know kind of thing so we're excited about being able to unveil it when when i i hate to say when the time is right but i mean just seriously when when we got when we got things together and the the, the time is okay to be able to announce we got something happening we got something happening we got something happening we got something happening you know all these kind of things being able to to just move forward and like one big tank 
you know, we're, we're hoping to be able to do that very soon. Yeah. And with all the projects you've been involved with, and I challenge anybody watching this, find me one metal drummer who's in one band. I don't think it exists because I know you're a very, uh, you're very busy, but I know it'll definitely be worth the wait. But with, um, you know, I think uh, with a with an album title like the last one, Time Does Not Heal, I think that's a, a good, uh, that was sort of like a good final title in a way. A little history. Was that sort of like known in a way that time? Uh, well, not heal was maybe going to be the last uh, Dark Angel album for the foreseeable future because you know you have been involved with so many projects. I mean, you put out individual thought patterns less than two years later. So, right, you know, not at all. You know, I mean, after uh, all, time does not heal was was like I hmm, leave scars was in no way a a concept album, um, but there were certain themes that that strung themselves from from leave scars over to time does not heal so leave scars and then time does not heal those scars that were left um it, as you know kind of the concept of the album cover you know a, a a little you know i just tried to think of what was the most you know innocent thing you could think of a little girl in her in her bedroom with all these like shadowy figures and just all these you know kind of demonic things that could be happening to her and then a number of years later, time does not heal all the scars that she, you know, that any child receives in childhood. Later, the time does not heal those scars. And it's the same woman. Now she's in a, you know, she's grown up and, and she's in a uh, very, you know, dangerous area, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, a lot of bad guys around that kind of thing. That's what the time does not heal album and concept was. And I was always interested in writing about just just the mental scarification of of things you know of 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 innocence and how you know you can things that happen at a very early age can affect you till till your adulthood and you know i was 17 18 19 20 writing these concepts and sure enough you know 30 something years later we are now seeing that you know things that happen in childhood directly affect adulthood and things like that and so leave scars time does not heal those sort of concepts went hand in hand and as a matter of fact you know dark angel we were when we you know went on our you know 20 something year hiatus uh 22 year hiatus uh we were working on another record at the time and that album was going to be called atrocity exhibition it was pretty well known in the dark angel history that we were moving forward we had just gotten a new guitarist at that time his name is Chris McCarthy. That is Chris without an H in it, C-R-I-S. Um, and we were moving forward on writing, writing another, you know, like hopefully even more brutal album than uh, than Time Does Not Heal. And so, yeah, it, Time Does Not Heal was not created as a as a shutdown, you know, kind of concept or album. We, we intended to keep going, but, you know, just things work out the way that they did and i was very fortunate personally that you know when when dark angel was no longer i was able to just keep you know moving and bouncing and and you know when I, even when i was a kid when i when i when i joined dark angel when i was a teenager i was like i'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life i'm going to be playing drums and if for whatever reason dark angel does not work out in the long term i'm I'm going to be okay. I'm going to keep playing with lots of kick-ass musicians, and I'm fortunate that I've been able to. And so that's why coming back full circle and jamming with my first family, my first band, you know, we are a family. And so that that's really exciting as well, you know, getting to bring some smiles to people's faces and make people sweat and headbang and thrash and all that. That's that's very very cool and we're, we're happy to be here to do it you make all people do that sweat headbang and thrash and all that but also every a lot of albums that you've been on too you make a lot of people think i don't know if this is just a coincidence or not but time does not heal the storylines behind that in a way or this concept but i feel like in a way concept albums or albums that are conceptual regardless i mean your work with death clock that clearly has storylines behind it <laughs> mechanized by fear really? factory is a great is a great concept album individual thought patterns like 
it almost seems like with the rhythm and beats and groove that you're able to translate behind the kit it almost seems like you know some for some drummers it's just you know keeping the rhythm holding the song together keeping the beat but it almost seems like with you with what you do you almost tell stories like every cymbal crash every snare hit every you know kick drum everything just almost tells a story in a way i feel like you convey your own language wow alex that is a, a wonderful observation thank you you know that i mean that that's I, that, to a large degree, yeah, that's how that's how it works, you know. Because I've always like I've always said this. I it's great to be like a fast, brutal, kick-ass, whatever kind of drummer. But the drummers that make resonate with me the most, and the drummer that I I most would like to be, I love drummers that can make the drums talk and sing. And yes, tell stories, you know, and so that's a, a fantastic observation. Thank you for, of course. for you know, seeing that, you know, that's very cool. So, of course. but that's why I've always wanted to be is, is uh, you know, I've, I've always wanted to make the drums talk, you know, even like with the approach, like the attack, the, the velocity with which you hit, the placement of your stick on the, on the skin, on the rim, as you're hitting the drums, you know, that's, that's a very important thing to me, and that's how you make drums talk and and sing and cry and emote. And you know, there are so many drummers that are so fantastic at that. You know, a lot of the R and B drummers and fusion drummers that that can, you know, hit one tom, and that just says so much. And I know people might be going, "What are you talking about?" But you know, when you're when you're really into into music, and you, you'll notice stuff like that. You know, I'm sure a lot of people do notice things like that. So that's Absolutely. that's pretty darn cool. Thank you very much. Anytime. You know, a lot of people. This is sort of like a part two to that question because a lot of people assume because drums aren't a melodic driven instrument, or you know, like what you know, a guitar solo or vocals can do, that it's not really an emotional instrument and it's just mainly a technical instrument. But I think that's total bullshit. I talked with Justin Foley of Kill Switch Engage about that. I've talked with you know, right. I talked with you know, uh, Sticks of Steel Panther about this. It seems like drums are a very emotional element. So when we listen to you know, like just take uh, any random track for example when we listen to uh like time does not heal in a way like is that conveying is is it almost a self-portrait or representative of, of, of an emotion that you were feeling when you were behind that kit in the studio absolutely you know and and like one way it might convey the emotion is like say you've got a, a pile of guitar riffs and it's one thing to just lay down some you know decent generic you know beat that will work you know, with, with a million different kinds of riffs. But when you really start diving into that 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 riff and ingratiating your beat with that riff, that that starts elevating the whole story of, of everything, of everything that you're trying to tell, the drums, how they interplay with what the guitar is doing, that's what creates, you know, that, that kind of magic. And that's where you start feeling kind of propelled into a story. And, you know, like one example is like, you know how you got the, the, the machine gun kicks that follow the rip, the chunk of the E, you know, that kind of thing, like time does not heal or no one answers or, you know, pieces of darkness descends the album. Um, that was one thing that, you know, when I was right here, crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, just heard a crazy beat. Don't expect that. Um, but when I was when I was writing those riffs and working out those things, that was an approach on on drums. You know, where you're writing drum patterns that follow the riff. You know, I was writing a lot of drum patterns, and I was like, well, you know, I I've never heard any. Yeah, no, this is like in those early days. I'm like, I when I'm 17, 18, 19, whatever age. I'm like, I've never heard anybody really following the chunk of the guitar with a kick drum pattern, um, like like a time does not heal. I'm like, I never heard anybody do that. Maybe that could be a cool approach that dark, you know, something that sets Dark Angel aside from other bands, you know, something that, that sets us apart from from other bands, try this approach. No one answers, or, or 
like I say, pieces on darkness descends itself. Um, and you know, that, that's, that's one thing that you can, you know, when, when you're able to kind of bring about that, I'm, I'm always, I was always trying to elevate the concept of drumming and I guess songwriting in our genre, you know, it's like, I didn't want to, we didn't want to sound, sound like anybody else. And, you know, writing a drum pattern, like, I don't know, like in death is certain, life is not, you know, like there, there's a there's a kick drum pattern that goes through the entire song. And a lot of other drummers have pointed that out. Like, man, when I heard that song when I was a kid, I've never heard drum patterns like that, where kick drums were doing like kind of marching snare kind of things on the kick drums. That was a really novel approach at the time. And, and you know, so that, that's pretty darn fun. You know, you just always try to do what you can to, to elevate yourself and if you happen to you know entertain some people and, and give some other folks some ideas or whatever or you you you, you, ele- you you bring up the you elevate the concept of what your your instrument is fantastic i'm all for it you know any kind of approach that is just outside the box i'm i'm all for it. You know, bringing in the the boat propeller in the death in the dark angel days actually where the boat propeller came about in very very late dark angel days but i use that on individual thought patterns you can see that on uh, one of those death videos philosopher and uh you know that kind of thing i like, try something different try something new that nobody else has done and you know you it, it sure is fun when you were giving those uh pattern references i thought you were uh, referencing uh, the rhythm for christopian off the mechanized uh uh, album from Fear Factory in a way that kind of had a similar uh, rhythm behind it, and uh, that was very uh, much that, that rhythm was. I always felt that was right out of uh, the new the new priesthood by Dark Angel. Yep. That's that's the new priesthood by Dark Angel. Yeah. You know, ten years before it, kind of thing. So, um, yeah, it, you, there's an approach. You know, Fear Factory they like to use that approach. And Dino always used to tell me, "Good God." huge i've seen all the old dark angel shows i was at every show back in the day you know big dark angel yep. fan here so mm. you know i mean i i see where um i can see where dark angel has left their scar and i'm very appreciative appreciative of it absolutely when it comes to recording drums, you know, because sometimes you have to do, you know, between five, ten, hundreds of takes in a way, but your music and your rhythms really capture an emotional moment and an energy in a way. But when you have to, you know, take multiple takes and, you know, do the same thing, and the more you do something, does it almost kind of become a little bit harder to maintain that emotion when, you know, that initially first sparked the idea? Well, that's where I guess probably some of the technician type angles coming in into into play or whatever um <laughs> like you know that emotion is going to be there from the part it's itself and these days you know we record two click tracks and you know i know there's a lot of fans out there that don't understand exactly what a click track is or what triggers are or samples or anything i, I know there's a lot of folks out there that aren't aren't they they're not quite well versed in what certain things do so like when if i'm recording like say just a death clock record or something um i'll do and a lot of a lot of those times like when it comes with to, when it comes to death clock a lot of those songs are they are come up with if not on the spot very very recently and so there's there's not been a lot of time to work on songs and like like Brendan and I were talking last week on 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 another podcast together how the first Death Clock album came about musically and it was pretty much you know we we had a, a whole list of songs that we had to do but they weren't songs yet they were just little thirty second parts forty second parts minute long part that had to flesh out into an entire song and that's when it gets really the challenge is trying to make those songs sound like they are they've been lived in and well rehearsed for months and months and months but really you've had two hours you got you got two hours to get this thing done so um so there you go but that's that's pretty darn cool let mm. me try to fix this thing just a little bit get this thing to get a little better angle on this for you yeah. uh, we're doing we're doing yeah. good we're doing good on time i have a couple more questions for you 
Yeah, we're we're doing fine. I, my my next person is uh, flexible and right. We we're in Brussels, Belgium, right now, nice. and we just learned. Yeah, we just learned at like midnight last night that Kiss is playing in Brussels tonight. So I reached out to some people and got the rest of the band into the show tonight. And I I have a full night of interviews, so it's going to be interesting. Everybody, have, have fun. I'll be, I'll be back here at the air. I say fuck the interviews and go on and uh, take over the drums on Kiss. Yeah. You know, put, put, sneak backstage, put some laxatives in the beers, and then you have to take over on drums. Oh, that's pretty fun. Yeah. Well, hey, it, you know, I, I'm, I, I know that you and I, we weren't able to connect last week, and then there was another. I think there was another rescheduling. So I just didn't want to have to, you know, just just miss a, like a second or third time. And I'm, I'm like, it's it's okay. It's okay. I'm I'm fine with that. You know, I mean, we all love Kiss. That's my first favorite band, aren't you? Yep. Them and I know uh, them and uh, Rush are your two inspirations, and uh, I could I could definitely see the inspiration of both. I feel like. Rush, Rush gives you like the thought-provoking aspect behind your hands in a way, and uh, Kiss brings the aggression behind it. So I think having those as your inspirations brings the contrast in your style. And boy, have you seen Ace Freely lately? I haven't. Have you seen pictures of him? No. You're looking at it right here. Oh. <laughs> I've seen pictures. Like I get asked, you know, I get recognized as being Gene when I'm out at a at a you know grocery store or whatever. And I, I've had people come up to me like, excuse me, has anybody ever told you you look like Ace Freely? And I'm like, I, I've i had this look forever. Ace Freely's copied my look. I've looked like this since I was a teenager. I've never changed this look. And I, like, I've looked at pictures of Ace Freely like where he's given an interview and they just have a, a, like a, a thumbnail, just one shot. I'm like, when did I do that interview? And it's like, you know, Ace Freely talks about <laughs> That is totally like, hey, hey, give me my, give me my look back. This is mine. <laughs> hey, I mean, the singer of Foo Fighters looks exactly like the drummer from Nirvana. It's pretty, uh, it's, uh. I know, right? Yeah. Got a little more weight on him, a little beard, but holy moly. <laughs> exactly. Those guys are dog <laughs> When it comes to, you know, coming up with drum patterns and, you know, recording and songwriting and all that, do you find it better to come up with ideas, especially because, you know, Dark Angel was a very organic and, you know, old school thrash camaraderie aspect behind it. But, like, do you find it easier to come up with ideas when you're more alone and isolation, when there's nothing between you and the kit? Or do you prefer to come up with ideas when you're in the company of your bandmates? Well, I tell you, it, it, it can work either way, but I am really, like, when I'm writing Dark Angel material, for instance, I am usually I'm I'm playing a lot of guitar. You know, I I, I write all the riffs, and then I start thinking about the beats afterwards. The beats are kind of I don't want to say they're they're you know the last thing thought of or secondary in nature, but the riff is the most important thing for me when it comes to like metal. And yes, the drums have to be you know real kick ass and. The, the drums propel the music so much. Like you can have great riffs and and you know kick-ass songs, but if your drummer is is not up to snuff with the with the with the riffs or with the way he you know is ingratiating himself in the band, that's that's a detriment. So you want your drums to be kick-ass. You know, like all the great thrash metal bands, you think about their drums. They all have great guitars, but when you think about Slayer or, you know, Megadeth or, you know, Anthrax to a large degree. Like you're thinking about, you know, you're thinking about Dave Lombardo as a drummer. You're thinking about Gar Samuelson as a, as a drummer and what he's bringing. And, you know, there's Dave Mustaine right there. Of course you're thinking of Dave Mustaine, but the drummers are just equally as important to all the early thrash stuff. So many bands that had kick-ass drummers were, I felt, were able to just kind of elevate right on past other bands are like, wow, these riffs are great. Shame about the drummer. You know, we wish the drummer had a couple years more experience. We were all children back then. I mean, there were times when your drummer is 16, 17, 18. I was 18 when we recorded Darkness to Sands. I was 18 when it came out. You know? So that's a, you, you do what you can when you can. It sounds like an 18 year old drummer to me on Darkness to Sands. Like the kids are just like, ah, just you know, go nuts being on the drum kit. But when it comes to writing, I'm, I'm, I write the riff usually, or, you know, there are a lot of times I'll come, I'll, I'll, I'll have a pattern, but I'll have, I'll, I'll, like, if I'm writing some kind of pattern, some kind of drum 
thing. I've got a pulse with it. Like, that's the thing. I'm always trying to make drums musical. Like, if I'm just playing a beat by myself, and it's and especially if it's some kind of strange, weird kind of beat, I am playing every single note that I am playing. Hi-hat, crash, kick drum thing. I am putting notes in my head to that beat, you know, you know, I'm just made that up off the top of my head, but uh, mm-hmm. oh, it wasn't that great. Um, <laughs> it um, might be a hit right there. Yeah, it, it just, like it, if I'm playing something, I'm, I'm putting a pulse behind it. I'm putting some kind of rhythmic structure behind what I'm doing. And a lot of times, like if I if I can write, I can write riffs to the tone of the drums. You know, like like drums have tone, obviously, but every drum kit has a different tone. So if you've got the snare that has this resonance note, you know, that can always be like you can hear this note and that can start working your riff that you're about to start writing in with that note of the of the drum or the ride bell. I've got these really loud ride bells that have definite notes to them. They're big gangly notes, and you can just write something to that note of the ride bell. That's pretty fun, and that makes everything really droney, and it just works together in such a in, in, in this kind of scary way. And you can get dissonance out of it as well. You know, like you've got this tone on, on a ride bell, that one of these big you know power bells, Sabian power bells that I play, that has a tone. And all the different power bells that I have, they have different tones, and you can write, and you could get the same note on the guitar, or you can start going you know a semitone off and making that just this ugly little dissonance together but it just works or you can make it really beautiful together so yeah you, you've got a myriad choices of how to approach writing drum writing guitar writing and all of them are equally fantastic definitely and i have two more questions for you does the sure. does the mindset or the emotion or just the energy change maybe also on the style like you know you've played you know you you playing with dark angel but you play with other thrash bands like testament and forbidden and whatnot but you've also played you know you played live with unearth which is a metalcore band uh despite their fl- thrash influence but then you know playing with devin townsend uh behind devin townsend is very different from playing behind michael ackerfeld when you played with opeth live so does the Absolutely. mindset or the energy or just do you maybe even express different sides of yourself depending on the project that you're in the mindset and the different sides of oneself as a drummer are definitely at the forefront of all of it and that's where you need to uh capture the essence of the band that you're playing with you know you need to be you need to have your parts be their parts you know you you, the, you what just a Dark Angel drum thing is not going to work with Devin Townsend. And Testament doesn't work with Death. And Death Clock might not be a good, you know, somebody else, unearthed kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> or Opeth or something. So that's where you've really got to bring out, you know, I'm always trying to, I think as a drummer and a drummer in, in, in my like genre i think it's great to be able to be a chameleon and i believe me i would much rather be known as like a well-rounded drummer than like oh that guy's the fastest or that guy hits the hardest or he's the you know whatever it's like i i I like being a well-rounded drummer i like being able to you know go right off stage from a dark angel show and sit in on a stevie wonder set and play both like the drummer that plays in both those bands, you know, kind of thing. Play like Stevie Wonder, you know, and, and that's that's very important to me, just being a well-rounded drummer. That's That means a lot more than, you know, having the fastest double bass or whatever, you know, the, he could play at the highest BPMs ever. Uh, that's never been that that exciting. Uh, I know Dark Angel gets up there in the BPM range, but that's, that's not all that important. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely giving each band its own character you know serving the song really you know you gotta you gotta serve the song like when it comes like say a testament eric peterson he's very um you know he's he has a real good vision of of what he wants out of the drums in his song like he'll you know 
acapella sing drum parts that he's looking for. And, you know, I, I can hear it. And just, you know, you know, he's like, I got a riff that goes, okay, that should come right there with you. And you just want to, whoever you're writing with and whoever you're writing for, you just want their vision to be achieved. So that's, and a lot of guys are totally different, you know, like, Devin Townsend, he's an amazing drum program. You know, he can program his stuff perfect. And if he gives you a little template, he'll tell you, hey, I'm, this is just, you know, I'm, I'm not that much of a programmer. Here's a template, you know, some real basic stuff. Do the gene stuff that you do, go nuts. And, um, and you know, there's an example, Brendan, Brendan Small, same kind of thing, you know, he'll give me, some templates of things but he's like man you're you're the drummer you're gonna play you're gonna play things better than i can write them and i understand that so here's a basic template just genize whatever and change things i'm always open and and you got guys like chuck from death who he was like i write guitar you know <laughs> you write all of the drums i'm you know and so I would check in with Chuck from time to time as, as the songs are building and things like that. And I, I you know, I'd be like, hey, Chuck, are, are, you know, are these beats working for you? And he's like, yay, man, they're, they're, they're doing good. You know, like, go sick, go nuts. And Chuck always told me that. And I've always said that, you know, I've always, I've always mentioned that that's what Chuck would say. Go sick, go nuts. You know, I like what you're laying down. I can play all my guitar parts over everything you're doing. So just keep doing what you're doing. And yeah. I, I'm cool with, how this is going so so it just runs the gamut and that's where my you know i'm very fortunate in my career that i've had the best of all worlds you know mm -hmm. there are some guys that whose programming is so amazing that i'm like dude i have to play your programming they're like well i kind of programmed some kind of octopus kind of things where you need you know three legs and four arms i'm like if anybody could do it, I can, you know, just, just let me at your programming, you know, just let me do that. And that is a super awesome challenge to, to be able to, to jump in and get in somebody else's brain and just pull out and walk in the fields of their mind and like see what they're seeing and how they're approaching their, their things. That improves me as a drummer million times because I've got my brain that goes that way and their brain is going this way and we get to go this way for a while and then this other part of this other song that they've got goes that way so you get to go over there instead of just doing what you do it opens you up so much if you can mimic somebody else's crazy chaotic drum program that's awesome you can grow so much as a musician when you get to do stuff like that so I, I love that you know Devin's programmed some stuff where I'm just like whoa <laughs> I have to, you know, I remember, like, God, the home nucleonics. He gave me that song in a, you know, off the city record. He gave me that as a programming, and there's some challenging drum parts where the demo version, the, the demo version might even be released somewhere. I don't know, but there's a kick drum pattern in there that I'm like, wow, that's a challenging kick drum pattern, but I got to learn it. So, yeah, things like that. That's pretty darn fun. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And the final question I wanted to ask you is, and I'm not trying to blow smoke by any means, but I've interviewed a lot of drummers and a lot of them have cited you as an inspiration just to shout out my local underground scene. But my buddy Carlos from Silent Vision holds you as an inspiration. My buddy Matt uh, and Christian from Viserion hold you as an inspiration. Ish from Dishonest Escape holds you as an inspiration. When you hear about a young drummer picking up a pair of sticks because they were inspired by you, or you know, you hear somebody say, "I hold Gene Hoagland as an inspiration behind what I do," or as you know, a drum influence. Does that maybe change your perspective on how you look at yourself as an artist, or maybe does that even inspire you when somebody takes your ideas and takes it to the next level? And does that maybe circle back to how it influences you as well? Well, um, uh, any any time anybody ever you know mentions inspirations and things like that, uh, I'm. I'm always very grateful, you know, that, that, that's really amazing that, you know, something that I enjoy to do, I like doing, I'm going to do regardless. And, you know, I, I'm trying to make myself happy. And when you find out that by making yourself happy, you also make other people happy, 
that's really amazing. And I, I, I'm very honored when somebody comes up and says, you know, I, I grew up listening to you and you've inspired me in this, in this way. And I, I've, I've stolen these beats from you. Cause I think I, and that always takes me right back to my inspirations, you know, and the guys I grew up loving and worshiping and stealing from and being completely influenced by and copying licks from uh, the, the very amazing drum clinician, Dom Famularo, who's well known in the clinic industry. He's, he's the top of the top. He said one time, he's like, if you're a drummer, steal, steal. You know, there's only so much you can do on the drum, you know, so steal, but expect to be stolen from. And I'm like, that that works for me. Because a lot of my licks, I listen back to, you know, some old Raven, some old ZZ Top, some old, you know, you know, all these licks from all these, you know, Steve Gadd, of course, Tommy Aldridge, of course, Raven, of course. Um, but you listen, I listen back to some of these old albums. I'm like, oh, that is exactly where I got that lick from, you know. And that's that's really fun. But I'm I'm always very blessed and very honored that anybody would find some inspiration in what I've done. That is really cool. And I hope that those young dudes are out there trying to go, how can I raise the bar? You know, cause I, 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 I was just trying to raise the bar for myself. And, um, you know, if it ends up having an impact on, on folks, fantastic. That's wonderful. Um, and I'm, I'm really appreciative, appreciative of it. And I just, I always want to be at the, at the top of my game. You know, I'm always going to, I, I never want to rest on any kind of laurel or anything. I never want to go, well, I've done it all. And, and, you know, I haven't done half of it. You know, I'm still learning as a drummer. I learn all the time. And there's some kind of, you know, kind of technique that I can hear about at this late stage, you know, later stage in, in my development. There's some kind of, you know, tech, if there's some kind of technique out there that can make me a better player than, I'm all about it. You know, I don't want to be closed minded. That's why a lot of the approaches of a lot of the young dudes drastically differ from mine, but I don't want to, I don't want to tell them you're wrong. I got told I was wrong all the time when, you know, I'm, I'm an OG thrash metaler with a kind of a, you know, sort of a, a classic rock in prog background. A lot of us have the exact same background. I applied all those backgrounds and a lot of people used to tell me that I'm, I'm wrong for my approaches. You can't do it the way that you're doing. And that would just make me dig my heels in even further. And then, yes, I am going to do it my way. And I don't care what you say. You know, I'm, I'm going places, you know, that's just the way I felt. I'm going to do it my way. And who knows, maybe I can come up with a whole bunch of tips and tricks and things that I can, you know, hand out to folks you might learn some things over the years gene and you might be able to impart some some of those things that you learn to other players and that's what i've always tried to do and you know so i'm i'm, I'm always excited when somebody is able to look at something i've done and go wow that that spoke to me you know means a lot yeah. to my heart that means a lot to my heart it, and it means it means a lot as a music lover to me. Again, my my friends who I just mentioned who are drummers are great people, and they're always pushing the envelope and you know keeping the underground alive. So uh, yeah, you, you, um, yeah. Well, give all of their buds my best. You know, don't keep keep pounding. And absolutely, thanks for doing what you guys are doing, and elevating the everything. You know, that's what you got to do. Anytime, man. Anytime. So before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time for such an excellent conversation. Is there just anything else with Dark Angel or any other project you're involved with or any uh, gear that you'd like to plug or anything else you'd like to promote uh, for the outro on, the, on this show? Holy boy, do we have about another half hour here. Holy. Um, well, let's see. Uh, you know, we've got, like I say, a ton of Dark Angel news on the horizon. That's really cool. And you can always check out all the socials about what's going on with Dark Angel. You know, we just we just opened up a merch store and people want to check out some of the merch. Like there were a lot of folks that like, man, you sold out of the shirt that I wanted. And a lot of times we'll pull that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make another run, put it in the merch store. So check out the merch store and all that. And everybody probably knows about the upcoming Death Clock stuff that's happening and 
you know, we have a bunch more Dark Angel shows on the horizon. We have, uh, like this weekend, we are Dark Angel is playing Grass Pop on Saturday and then Hellfest on Sunday. Wow. And then in a month from now, we were, we're going to be playing Yefle Fest in Sweden and also uh, in, in Greece. So that the Greece show is going to be a Darkness Descends show where we're playing Darkness Descends and, you know, kind of like New York City, like Los Angeles before. Wow. And, you know, anybody who sees Dark Angel coming to your town, they come check us out because you're going to be in, in, in for a night of sweat. Let me tell you. Yeah. You're going to come out of there sweaty. Most certainly. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I think I had like 80 other people's DNA on me from the sweat at the Irving Plaza show. But, I mean, <laughs> right. but hey, it's totally European right. festival season. The season is upon us now. So that's what you're all focused on right now. That is true, man. But uh, And again, we're going to have some real exciting news for all for everybody real soon hopefully and you know uh, but things are definitely moving forward in, a, in, in in the best way possible things are definitely moving forward 1000 percent. so that's pretty good awesome well thank you so much everybody we are here with gene hoglan of dark angel death clock and many many other bands look up the catalog it's awesome this is alex from heavy new york and we will see you next time thank you alex